If we are taking a large sample, and instead of calculating a mean of the results, we want to know what proportion of people responded in a certain way, we can still use the central limit theorem for these proportions by just changing the formula for the standard error. But first, a little background. The proportion of success from a binomial experiment creates a normal distribution. A quick review about binomials. The binomial variables that we saw back with the binomial distribution P is the probability of success. Q is the probability of failure. And we know that P plus Q, because those are the only two options in a binomial experiment, must give all the options, or 100% of the results. Now it turns out that the mean of this normal distribution that is created from the proportion of successes from the binomial experiment is exactly p, the probability of success of any one result. And then we can calculate the standard error of the normal distribution. is the square root of p times q divided by n, where n is the sample size. So with these formulas in mind, let's take a look at an example. Turns out that 45% of smartphone owners own an iPhone. If we took a sample of 250 smartphone users what is the probability that less than 40% own an iPhone Let's first identify what we've been given in this example. We've been told 45% of smartphone users own an iPhone. That is the probability of any one success. So p is going to be equal to 0.45. From this, we can see if p is 0.45, q must be 0.55 because they have to add up to 1. We can do 1 minus 0.45 to get the 0.55. We're also told the sample is 250 people. So that's our n, our sample size. So when we try and use this as a normal distribution, in place of mu, the average, we're going to use p, the proportion, which is 0.45. And in place of sigma, which is normally the standard deviation, we're going to use the standard error, which is the square root of p, 0.45 times q, 0.55, divided by n, the sample size of 250. So with that in mind, we can think about our normal distribution, which has a mean in the middle of 0.45. And we want less than 40%. So 40% is off to the left. We want the area to the left of that 0.40%. Well, we can do this on Excel using the normal distribution command by typing in equals norm.dist, open a parentheses, 
the value we're interested in, we want the area to the left of 0.4, comma, the mean, we're using 0.45, the proportion, the standard deviation, we're using this big square root. We'll type in Excel SQRT for the square root, open a parentheses, and we can just type in 0.45 times, on shift 8, 0.55, and then the slash for divide, the 250. Close the parentheses on the square root, and we can say comma true. And Excel then will give us the area to the left on this normal distribution is equal to 0 0.0533. So the probability that we do a sample of 250 people and get fewer than 40% of them owning an iPhone is only 0 0.0533. Let's try an inverse command using the central limit theorem. In statistics, we say if a sample has less than 5% chance it is considered unusual. We want to find the range of values for the top 5% of samples. In other words, what percentages would be too high that we would consider them to be unusual for that percent of users to have a smartphone? Again, we're going to draw our picture. With the mean in the middle, the mean we use the proportion of 0.45, but we want the top 5%. So we want 5%. That's the area, 0 0.05 to the right. We want to know what proportion will give us that value. Now, if we're going to do this on Excel, we remember that Excel only does the bottom, the left side of the distribution. So we need to figure out how much area is in the left side by subtracting the 0.05 from 1, and we find out the area to the left is 0.95. So we'll use the normal inverse command with 0.95. We'll type in equals norm dot inverse, and we use the inverse because we know the probability we want the proportion. The probability to the left that we want is 0.95, comma. For the mean, we're using the proportion value of 0.45, comma. For the standard deviation, we're using that standard error formula, which is the square root, SQRT, open a parentheses, our p proportion of 0.45, times is the star key on shift 8, 0.55 is the Q, divided by N, which is 250. Close the parentheses on the square root, close the parentheses on the normal inverse command, and when we type this into the calculator, we'll find out that the proportion is 0 0.5010. In other words, a sample with over 50.1% iPhone users would be unusual. So the central limit theorem does also work for proportions in these binomial experiments. If we're looking at the proportion of our sample, the mean of the normal distribution matches the proportion of the entire population. We'll replace the standard deviation with the standard error, which is the square root of PQ over N.